Okay. So, now principle of the induction motor right. So, uh, the operation of a three phase induction motor is based upon the application of Faraday's law and the Lorentz force on a conductor right. So, suppose you have a this is this is your this is your conductor having length L right and you have made a ladder and both sides the two bars are connected right. So, in that case all, all the all the materials are conducting. Now, the, suppose a permanent magnet is placed on the top of this conductor. So, now if you if you now this this is a this is B this is that at conductor length is L and this actually flux density this is the B flux density. Now, if you drag the conductor right uh, sorry drag this magnet to the right hand side with a speed V say then flux will cut therefore, what will happen because of that a voltage E is equal to B in this is the flux density B. So, a voltage E is equal to B into L into V will induce right. So, in the in that case what will happen that because of that a current will flow this is the current I and immediately that half of half uh, half of the current will flow through this half of the current will flow through the conduct your what you call conducting your uh, uh, this through this conductor right. So, in that case as uh, assuming that you are holding this ladder you are not allowing it to move, but if you make it free then what will happen that uh, that ladder also will uh, move in the direction of the your what you call in the direction of the magnet as magnet is moving we are moving the magnet to the right hand side and keep a very little gap between this between this conductor and the magnet. So, in that case that if ladder also moves there. So, there will be a relative speed between that magnet and the ladder. So, finally, that voltage E also will uh, reduce and the current also will reduce or diminish right. So, from this only from this concept only the principle of induction machine has come that how it rotates because it is self starting. So, we will we'll come to that. Right. So, in this case, this part of this uh, this diagram I have taken from a book. Right. So, in this case, the four things will happen: a voltage E is equal to BLV is induced in each conductor while it is being cut by the flux. So, this is Faraday's law. Now, the induced voltage immediately produces a current I, which flows down the conductor through the end bar and back through the other conductor. So, I told you current I and I by two, I by two on both sides. Right and because the current carrying conductor lies in the magnetic field of the permanent magnet it experiences a mechanical force that is called Lorentz force. And the force always act in a direction to drag the conductor your along with the magnetic field. Now, if the conducting ladder is free to move now we are allowing to move then it will accelerate toward the right. However, as it picks up speed the cord your conductors will cut less rapidly because the relative speed will go down right with the result that the induced voltage G and the current I will diminish. Consequently, the force acting on the conductor will also decrease right. So, if the ladder were to move at the same speed at the magnetic field the induced voltage G the current I and the force would all be 0 because relative speed will be 0 right. So, therefore, in an induction motor the ladder is enclosed upon itself to form a squirrel cage if you just um, fold it right. So, it looks like a ladder will look like a your what you call the squirrel cage right and the moving magnet is replaced by a rotating field. So, there in this diagram in this diagram for the purpose of explanation we have taken a moving magnet, but in the your what you call in the induction machine it will be a three phase magnetic field the rotating magnetic field and if you enclose this ladder it will look like a your squirrel cage that is why this example is uh, this diagram is taken. So, in this case your what you call that it looks like your your in an induction motor the ladder is enclosed upon itself to form a squirrel cage and the moving magnet is replaced by a rotating magnetic field right. So, the field actually is produced by the three phase current which, which flow in the stator windings. So, now this is a schematic diagram this figure I have taken from a book right. So, this uh, uh, your what you call this part this uh, this uh, your external circle this part actually this part this part external one this is actually stator stator part right. So, and the e and the and that other part this part which I am making it here this is actually say your rotor part right and in between in between stator and rotor the e small gap is there I told you this is that air gap right this small gap this is the air gap right. So, uniformly it is uniform. So, I told you depending on the rating of the machine it may be 0.4 to 4 millimeter right or may vary also as per the rating of the machine. 
So, now this is your uh, this and this, this A, B and C this is actually three phases are there A, B, C three phases right three phases are there. So, it is schematical it is shown. Similarly, inside the inside the rotor also you can see something this this is actually direct T, T L, T L you need not bother now because we will see the basic thing only and these are your what you call these are your what you call the three phase terminals. The way you have seen three phase A, B, C here also three phase terminals same thing and, and it is connected to a bus bar called infinite bus where voltage and frequency is constant. So, what is infinite bus right now you need not bother you assume it is connected to the three phase supply where voltage and frequency will remain constant right. So, now, now question is and your what to you call and this speed n actually this is the speed of the rotor and n is that speed of the your what to you call that your rotating field. Now, three phase single phase circuit while we are studying we are trying to find out some speed n s right that is considering pair of p poles right, but in this case we will take that the formula is there that synchronous speed is equal to 120 a by p, p is number of poles. For example, if f is equal to frequency is 50 hertz and p is equal to say 4 pole machine that p is equal to 4 no question of pair only poles. So, n s is equal to your 120 into 50 divided by 4 right. So, it will be 1500 rpm right. So, if induction machine is of your what you call that your uh, generally you will find it will be uh, your p p or p pole uh, 4 pole machines. So, in that case its speed will be later we will see if it acts as a motor its speed will be less than your uh, 1500 uh, rpm right and if it is uh, if it runs as a generator it will be just above 1500 rpm we will not discuss about induction generator only little bit about motor right and generally you will find it is a 4 pole machine, but the magnetic field but the magnetic field the three phase magnetic field it is rotate at a synchronous speed n s that is say 1500 rpm for example, and this n is there this is the speed of the rotor which will uh, which will be less than the your synchronous speed n s right. So, now how now whatever this thing it is here. So, what will happen? So, consider a cylindrical rotor machine with both the stator and rotor own for three phase as shown in figure right this this upper part is a stator and inside circle is a rotor and between you that air gap is there. Now, assume initially the rotor winding to be open circuited and let the stator be connected to an infinite bus that means, you assume the rotor is open circuited it is it is not short circuited first for our understanding you assume the rotor is open circuited and it is and stator it is connected to a supply where voltage and frequency both are constant right. The stator current set up a rotating magnetic field in the air gap right which runs at synchronous speed inducing m f in the stator winding which balances the terminal voltage under the assumption that the stator resistance and react leakage reactance are negligible. Now, as soon as you supply the your stator as you when you are connecting the stator terminal to a sub uh, voltage your uh, supply uh, uh, voltage right. So, naturally uh, that voltage will also induce in your what you call in the stator winding and it creates a rotating magnetic field which rotate at a synchronous speed your what you call n s right. So, this this is f 1 is given actually stator m m f or that is f 1 right. So, so, arbitrarily it is taken right, but this magnetic field rotating at a synchronous speed n s actually electrical engineering many things are not visible right. Like your magnetic field you can feel it, but you cannot visualize car voltage current you can see the wave from other things you, but you can feel it, but you cannot see in your open eyes only you can see that wave form right. So, e, in a flux also it is not it is not a visible quantity only you can feel it right. So, uh, similarly here your what you call only you can see their wave form the pattern, but eyes you cannot see that how is it right. So, uh, so in that case the stator current set up a rotating magnetic field in the air gap which runs at synchronous speed inducing a wave in the stator winding that is your f 1 I showed you which balances the terminal voltage under the assumption that the stator resistance and leakage reactances are negligible right. Now, also that uh, rotor, rotor your rotating field induces EMF in the rotor winding because rotor is also there. So, field is rotating. So, it, it will also induce your what you call EMF in the rotor winding, but no rotor current can flow because we have assumed the rotor, rotor is open circuited right. 
So, the frequency of the rotor EMFs of course, f because rotor is not rotating. So, frequency of the rotor EMF is also f right. Since the rotor MMF f to 0 because rotor is open circuited. So, no current is showing. So, rotor MMF at this stage f 2 is equal to 0 that means, this diagram that is arbitrary it is made it that f 2 is equal to 0 right. So, in this case your the no torque developed and the rotor continues to be stationary. So, rotor is uh, not moving it is stationary. Now, the machine you acts merely as a transformer where the stator we call say primary like transformer and the rotor the secondary have a waves of the same frequency induced in them by the rotating magnetic flux rather than by stationary time bearing flux as in an ordinary transformer. So, transformer we have seen that suppose phi is equal to phi max or sin omega t right. So, but here it is a that was a stationary time bearing flux as in ordinary transformer, but here it is a rotating your what you call magnetic flux because you are giving three phase supply to the stator winding. Now, let the rotor be now held stationary that is blocked from rotation. Now, rotor is not open circuit, it is short circuited, but you are not allow the rotor to rotate say you imagine and, and on the rotor winding be short circuited right. In this case the rotor now carries three phase current creating the MMF F 2 rotating in the same direction and with the same speed as the stator field. Now, if e, here it is in the diagram, in the diagram this is my F 2, but we are not allowing the rotor to rotate. Here it is given N s minus N with respect to rotor or N s with respect to stator. So, when rotor is you are not allowing the rotor to rotate, so it actually this F 2 actually this n is actually what will happen that the speed of this MMF right it will be just n s with respect to stator because you are not allowing the rotor to rotate, but as soon as you allow the rotor to rotate with n it will be n s minus n because relative speed with respect to rotor right. So, in this case so in this case let the rotor be now held stationary and the rotor winding be short circuited. So, naturally if the current will flow therefore, MMF will be there in the rotor right. So, so, but with the same speed as the stat as the stator field because rotor is we are not allowing the rotor to rotate. Now, F 2 causes like your transformer F 2 causes reaction currents to flow into the stator from the bus bar bracket whatever is written just, li uh, just look into this such that the flux per pole that is phi r of the resultant flux density wave induces a stator EMF to just balance the terminal voltage this is same as your philosophy is to some extent will be like transformer right. So, F 2 causes reaction currents to flow into the stator from the bus bar such that the flux per pole that is a phi r of the resultant flux density wave induces a stator EMF to just balance the terminal voltage because now current is flowing to the rotor. Now, obviously, phi r must be the same as when the rotor was open circuited right even, even when the machine is loaded also this phi r will remain more or less constant right. In fact, phi r will remain constant independent of the operating condition created by the load on the motor. Now, the interaction of phi r and F 2 that is the resultant flux phi r and F 2 which are stationary with respect to each other right creates the torque tending to move the rotor in the direction of F r. The induction motor is therefore, a self starting device right. So, this interaction between phi r and F 2 right which are stationary with respect to each other creates the torque and tending to move the rotor in the direction of F r. So, this is that your diagram this is your that resultant flux phi r and F 2 will interact with each other and this will be the your what you call the direction of this uh, your direction will be your what you call this resultant will be F r right. So, this way this way if you look into this uh, the this one right. So, this phi r m 2 with, with respect to each other creates the torque tending to move the rotor in the direction of paper the in if that induction motor is there for a self starting device right. So, let the short circuit rotor be now permitted to rotate now you uh, now you make it to freeze so the rotor will rotate now if it rotate it runs in the direction of the stator field and acquire a steady state speed of n right. So, it, it is it will rotate in the direction of your what you call that your this in F r right with that n s that same your uh, synchronous speed, but now the rotor is rotating that rotate is rotating in the direct in the direction of the your what you call same direction of the magnetic field. So, naturally what will happen this as rotor is rotating the speed n which is less than n s right which is less than n s. So, 
uh, that means the rotor will rotate in the in that your what you call in the same direction of the your what you call that your rotating magnetic field, but it will never catch N s. If it catches N s, then N minus the relative speed will become zero then, right? So in this case, uh, it runs in the direct starter field and acquires a steady speed of N, obviously N less than N s because if n is equal to n s the relative speed between the starter field and the rotor winding will be 0 right and and therefore the induced emf and rotor currents will be 0 and hence no torque is developed right therefore the rotor thus cannot reach the synchronous speed n s it will slip actually it will be for induction motor it that n should be less than n s with the rotor running at n the relative speed of the starter field with respect to the rotor conductor is n s minus n right because both are moving in the same direction in the direction of the n s the, the frequency of induced wave and current in the rotor is therefore, it will be n s minus n is equal to 120 f 2 by p that is your f 2 is equal to actually this f 2 is equal to actually it is rotor your uh, frequency and this is your n s minus n is your is the you have to call that the relative speed and n s minus n 120 f 2 upon p. Now, f 2 is equal to can be written as you write f 2 is equal to p into n s minus n upon 20 the numerator and denominator you multiply by n s numerator and denominator right and this part n s minus n upon n s this part we define as your s that is the that is we call slip right and your and, and this one this part is a because n s is equal to 120 I showed you earlier 120 a by p therefore, your P is equal your what you call P is equal to your uh, this thing 120 F by your N S right. So, this one you can write is that it this is your what you call N, N S into P upon 120. So, this is your this part is S and this part is your what you call the F, F is equal to P N S uh, rather than this one you write F is equal to P N S divided by 120 from this equation F is equal to. So, this is S into F, the rotor your frequency F 2 is equal to S into F when rotor is moving with a slip S and S is equal to your N S minus N upon S right. So, so it is called the slip of the rotor right. The slip S is the power unit speed this is dimensionless quantity with respect to synchronous speed at which the rotor slips behind the stator field right. So, n s minus n is the difference of the speed divided by n s it is a dimensionless quantity. So, that is why we call the slip s right. The rotor frequency f 2 is equal to s f is called the slip frequency, but when machine is stand still at the time s is equal to 1 because at the time n is equal to 0 when rotor is not moving n is equal to 0. So, at that time your what you call s will be 1 at stand still. So, from equation 2 easily you can write n is equal to 1 minus s into n s so, this is equation 3. From equation 1 you can also write that 120 s into f upon p is because f 2 is equal to s f right. So, that is why 120 s f upon p is equal to n s minus n this is equation 4 right. Since the rotor is running at a speed n and the rotor field at n s minus n right with respect to the rotor in the same direction the net speed of the rotor field as seen from the stator is it will be just n plus n s minus n is equal to n s look at that. Since, the rotor is running at a speed n right uh, and the rotor field at n s minus n right with respect to the rotor in the same direction that uh, the net speed of the rotor field as seen from the stator is your n s. So, in this case again I am going back to the uh, this diagram I am going back to this diagram. So, this is your n s minus n with respect to rotor right and if it is your what you call if you add n right. So, what the, the, it will be actually same as your speed of the rotor field that is your n s and this is the direction of the torque is given we will see little bit of that right and that is from this schematic diagram I thought it will be better uh, your what you call it will be uh, better understanding and one thing is there this f 2 f this uh, what you call this f 1 f 4 f 2 all are your what you call stationary with respect to each other this is also moving with n s this is also moving with n s right and so all these things will be stationary because uh, you are what you call therefore, this and this is the angle delta between f r and f 2 dash right. 
So, all the, all these things will remain stationary. So, so, here, so this is your what you call that with respect to the rotor, there is the same direction the net speed of the rotor field as seen from the stator is it will remain as your n s right. So, that is same of the stator field that is rotor field and stator field both are moving at the same speed n s. Thus, the reaction field f 2 of the rotor is always stationary with respect to the stator field f 1 or the resultant field f r with respect with flux phi r per pole right. So, that means, the, the your reaction field f 2 you have drawn right in the diagram of the rotor is always stationary with respect to the stator field f 1 or the resultant field f r right. So, all these things are remain stationary. So, now circuit diagram of a three phase slip ring induction motor with delta connected stator and y star connected rotor is shown in this. This is a stator winding, this is the three phase supply right and this is the rotor winding, this A C to the voltage induced in the rotor we will see later right and this is your what you call that uh, brushes are there, slip rings are there to be sorted through resistance at the time of starting. This will do it when you perhaps in your second or third year when you will do the induction motor uh, experiment right three phase induction motor experiment at that time you will see this on rotor motor. So, in this case the rotor or rotor winding is connected to slip rings which are sorted through your external resistance at the time of starting. The resistances are cut out as the motor attains full speed here it is resistance here at not shown here it is not shown here right. So, the rotor of a squirrel cage motor has permanently sorted bars there. So, this can be replaced from a your what you call circuit point of view by an equivalent own rotor. In the case of in the case of quirial cage motor all these things are not there because rotor itself is sorted. So, from equation 2 we can write slip is equal to n s minus n upon n s. This is n s minus n score slip speed and this is your synchronous speed. Sometimes if it is a numerical if it is a slip speed then you will take the difference of these two n s minus n right. It will be for motor it will be always positive right and therefore, s is equal to 1 minus n upon n s say this is equation 5. Now, obviously, for n is equal to 0 that is when rotor is stationary s is equal to 1 that is for the stationary rotor and s is equal to 0 for n is equal to s that is for the rotor running at synchronous speed right. So, from equation 1 the frequency of the current induced the rotor is same as f 2 is equal to s f this we have seen right frequency of induced your what you call uh, car your currents uh, induced in the rotor is f 2 is equal to s f this we have seen. The normal full load slip of the induction motor is of the order of 2 to 8 percent. So, that the frequency of the rotor current is as low as 1 to 4 hertz right. If it is 2 percent and slip is 2 percent that f is 50 hertz. So, it will be hardly your what you call f 2 will be 1 hertz because point uh, 0 to into your 50 right. So, par phase now next is the par phase your what you call stator EMF is given by u 1 is equal to say pi root 2 like transformer k w 1 n phase 1 f into phi r. See k w 1 is winding factor I am not discussing this here just you keep it in your mind because more you will study in your electrical engineering in your third year induction machine and this is n phase 1 that is n p h 1 that is a stator side actually number of turns we call n p h 1 and f frequency and fire is the flux per pole. So, per phase rotor EMF your what you call at s is equal to 1 the standstill rotor is given by when s is equal to 1 rotor is a standstill at that time EMF will be pi root 2 k w 2 n p h 2 f phi r the, the way you do in transformer pi into root 2 multiply it will become I think 4.44 right and this is winding factor k w 2 also called the winding factor of the rotor and as if this is your primary side as if this is your secondary side right. So, E 1 is equal to stator induced DMA per phase, E 2 is equal to rotor induced DMA per phase right. K w 1 is stator winding factor, K w 2 rotor winding factor, N p h 1 stator turns per phase, N p h 2 rotor turns per phase. That way we do transform of this thing and phi r resultant air gap flux per pole right. Now, at any slip S the rotor frequency being S f right any therefore, the rotor induced to M f changes to A c 2 because rotor frequency now changes to your f 2 is equal to S f. 
therefore, the rotor induced EMF actually will be it will be AC 2 right. So, if it is slip is 1 at that time it is E 2, but when that uh, it, when rotor is running it has some slip. So, it is induced EMF will be AC 2. So, consider now the impedance of the rotor circuit for z 2 is equal to r 2 plus j x 2 when it is a standstill right when slip is equal to 1. Now, when x 2 is equal to leakage reactance of the rotor at standstill that is rotor frequency is equal to stator frequency at the time right. So, it is f. Now, when the rotor running at slip s at that time its frequency being s f frequency is changing therefore, its impedance changes to your what you call r 2 plus j x 2 right because frequency is s f suppose uh, suppose when you make uh, this one when you make this one say general say x is equal to you know no l omega right omega is equal to 2 pi f. So, 2 pi f your omega is equal to your 2 pi f this l omega into you write l right. So, but rotor frequency instead of f it will become f 2 and f 2 will be s f this one into l. So, it will be your what you call 2 pi f the s is s into your what you call x right in general. So, this is your what you call uh, your that is why the rotor frequency will be now where rotor is running is impedance will be r 2 plus j s x 2 r 2 is resistant, but this reactance depends on the frequency. So, therefore, it is it is therefore seen that that the frequency of rotor current is induced EMF and rea and reactance all vary in direct proportion to the slip because where rotor is rotating its frequency is changing of induced EMF current as well as the reactance also because this is this is F right because in general we know L omega, but in the case of rotor it will be F 2 is the frequency F 2 is equal to S f. So, that is why S is here. Now, this is that equip figure 6 shows the rotor circuit as slip S this is the induced voltage say rotor circuit rotor itself is a short circuit thing. So, this is R 2 resistance this is S x 2 it is given as a your what you call that a variable symbol right and this is the current I 2 right. So, in this case your this is the rotor circuit because rotor is short circuit so it is a closed path right. Now, the phase angle of the circuit theta 2 is equal to tan inverse S x 2 upon R 2 right. So, this is your theta 2 that is the lagging. Now, also E 1 by E 2 if you this expression this this expression if you make here it is written that this expression you make it E 1 by E 2 you just divide E 1 by E 2 then it will be like this e 1 by e 2 if you make then it will be it will be k w 1 n p h 1 upon k w 2 n p h 2 that is n 1 upon n 2 say right n 1 is equal to k w 1 n p h 1 n 2 is equal to k w 2 n p h 2 that is equal to say a right. So, in this case where n 1 n 2 the effective stator and rotor transfer phase right. So, that is your we are making like a transformer we are making it. Now, development of circuit model next. So, circuit model is same as a transformer say E 1 upon E 2 is equal to A, A is given N 1 upon N 2 and the current your I 2 dash upon I 2 is equal to 1 upon A right. The way we did transformer same way and E 2 is equal to standstill rotor EMF right. So, number 2 like in a transformer the magnetizing current component I m of the stator current lack the stator induced level E 1 by 90 degree same as before. The index number 3 the induction motor is not merely a transformer which changes voltage and current levels it is it in fact behaves like a generalized transformer in which the frequency is also transformed in proportion to slip such that the rotor induced EMF is AC 2 and the rotor reactance is S x 2 right. So, these are the certain things. Now, the when you derive that equivalent circuit like transformer its coal loss component is neglected. This is stator side as if your transformer primary side R 1 x 1 current is I 1 this is I 2 dash right this current is I 2 dash I 1 is equal to I m plus I 2 dash and this is your voltage uh, for an ideal the way you make in ideal transformer right same thing this is the voltage E 1 and this this side is frequency a uh, frequency is given mark is as f right and P m we will see it is a mechanical power output per phase that is why divided by 3 we will see later and this is figure 7 a and this is the rotor circuit frequency is f 2 is equal to s f and voltage into the rotor circuit just we saw a c 2 this is r 2 s x 2 and this is the current i 2 right. So, next one is this is the first circuit right next one is and rotor is rotating with a speed of n here it is n right here it is n it is given like this. Now, 
next one is this derivation is later next one is this side remain left hand side remain as it is this is frequency f this is frequency f 2 s f 2 is equal to s f now this is rotor circuit this is e 1 this part will be s a e 2 is equal to s e 1 here it is ratio is a is to 1 here it is a is to 1 a is equal to your n 1 by n 2 a is equal to n 1 by n 2. So, here it is your ratio is given a is to 1 right. So, in this your uh, what you call now in this case it is 1 is to 1 and all this transform all these things transform this transformation is shown later the way you do it transformer almost similar it will be there r 2 dash is equal to s square r 2 s x 2 dash will be s into s square x 2 and current here this side is i 2 i 2 dash right. Now, here if you look into this i 2 dash is equal to your then i 2 dash upon i 2 is equal to 1 upon a therefore, i 2 dash will be is equal to your i 2 upon i 2 upon a right. So, this side if you transform it it will become 1 is to 1 it will become i 2 dash is equal to i 2 upon a and this s a e 2 will become s a c 1 this is 1 is to 1 derivation I mean uh, without derivation also is just little bit if you can do it you can easily do it this, but derivation is there later right. Now, next is next is this this right hand side you divide this thing by s yes. uh, this all the parameters you divide by s yes. this 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 side it is now 1 is to 1 this all the side you divide by s. Yes. So, after saying this I will come to derivation at that time I will not come to this figure. So, you what you do is that you divide all this thing by s yes. then if you divide everything by s yes, then this will become e 1 this will become your x to your what you call x this s x 2 dash divide by s yes, it will be x 2 dash and if you divide by this one it will be r 2 dash by s. Yes. So, it will be x 2 dash r 2 dash by s yes, and this is your what you call u 1 u 1. So, here it is not shown again 1 is to 1 right. So, this is frequency f this is frequency f now right because everything is made in terms of this size right. So, now here it is also because everything is divided by s. Yes, so, here it is now equivalent circuit now it is f 2 is equal to s f now it is frequency j f because this is u 1 this is u 1 this way you have made it. Now, the next what we will do next as this is u 1 this is u 1 like transformer. So, this these two things will come to this side we will bring it right. So, if you bring it it is x 2 dash and r 2 dash and circuit is closed. So, this is your what you call induction machine equivalent circuit, but r c is not shown here we will show it. So, this is the equivalent circuit of the induction machine right. So, now if you if you add that coal loss component like transformer then this branch has come rest is same, but this branch has come. Now, how these things are coming? Now, this is the development of the equivalent circuit of induction motor, but how, how things are coming? The circuit model of the induction motor can now be drawn on per phase basis as shown in figure 7a. Now, all these things are, I have told you. So, all this all this write up is here just go through it right just go through it right. So, look at this derivation i 2 is equal to you can write a c 2 upon r 2 plus j s x 2 from that uh, the rotor circuit diagram in that first one figure 7 a. So, in that case your you can make it your what you call numerator and denominator you multiply by a. So, a s a e 2 then a r 2 plus j s a a into x 2 your numerator and denominator multiply by a. We know i 2 by a is equal to i 2 dash therefore, this i 2 your denominator you multiply by a again. So, it is i 2 by a is equal to i 2 dash so, s a e 2 a square r 2 plus j s a square x 2. So, this part can be written as that your e 2 can be your what you call this e 2 can your a e 2 can be written as e 1 because e 1 by e 2 is equal to a. So, it is a c 1 divided by a square r 2 plus j s a square x 2 right. Therefore, define z 2 dash is equal to a square r 2 plus j s a square x 2 that is r 2 dash plus j s x 2 dash r 2 dash is equal to this much x 2 dash is equal to this much right. So, that is why whatever we, we have made it here whatever we have made it here I am going to this circuit whatever we made it here a c 2 then it is ultimately it is a c 1 easily you can make it right. So, that is that is why this a c 1 is here. So, similarly here it is we have derived it from that your what you call from this one this is actually a c 1. So, this is this is the equivalent parameter of the induction machine same as the transformer numerical also will do to some extent this thing right or i 2 dash you can write a c 1 upon this thing. So, divide numerator and denominator by s therefore, it is coming i 2 dash is equal to e 1 divided by r 2 dash plus j x 2 dash that is everything is transformed to the stator side right. So, the simple tricks refer to the rotor circuit to the 
your this, this simple trick refers to the rotor circuit to the stator frequency, because at that time your what you call right hand the, this circuit is referred to your like your stator frequency, because this circuit this circuit here it is now frequency f here also frequency f here it was s f here it is s f, but this one has divided by s. So, it is this type frequency is f this is a frequency this is a simple trick right. So, this is uh, this is your what you call that I 2 dash. So, this simple trick refers to the rotor circuit to the stator frequency. Now, if R 2 dash is separated from R 2 dash by S to represent the rotor copper loss as a your separate entity the circuit model is shown in figure 8 a right in which the variable resistance represent the mechanical output in electrical form. That means, your what you call that means, uh, this your resistance is that is your we got R 2 dash by S this is the thing right, but stator side your what you call a resistance basically R 2 dash therefore, what you do you subtract R 2 dash then add R 2 dash right. That means, this one can be written as R 2 dash plus you take R 2 dash common it will be 1 upon S minus 1 right. So, this again I have taken from a book. So, this one if you look into that I make it because I represent everything by small letter. So, basically R 2 dash is nothing but small R 2 dash X 2 dash is nothing but a small X 2 dash R 1 is nothing but a small R 1 capital X 1 nothing but a small R 1 and capital X m is nothing but a small X m and this is R i right and this is the current I 0 similarly your R i is nothing but a small R i. So, and this this is separated right this rotor circuit this part is separated uh, this is actually rotor react your reactance and this is your resistance and rest this is whatever this part right this is actually mechanical power output because R 2 by S S is variable right. So, it is slip. So, just uh, just take it out uh, take out this one rest will be R 2 dash into 1 upon S minus this is the mechanical uh, power output that is called gross one right we will see that. So, that means, this is this this circuit this circuit actually uh, this circuit is R 2 dash upon S once again I am telling you this R 2 dash by S can be made two things. One is your you add R 2 dash plus you can write you take R 2 dash common then 1 upon S minus 1 then add R 2 dash subtract R 2 dash. So, this part is coming there what was circuit I shown there. So, this part actually separated the rotor resistance is separated right. So, that is why that is why this circuit this circuit is like this is actually mechanical output right. So, many meanings are there of it. this is say figure 8 a. So, nothing this is basically if you add these two it will be R 2 dash by S right. So, actually so alternatively the circuit model of this thing could be used like this. I mean if you if you neglect that this component this R i component. So, it can be your you use like this or your what you call R 2 dash uh, X 2 dash R 2 dash here it is actually uh, just hold on here it is there is a this R 2 dash actually printing mistake is here here is R 2 dash should be there here right a printing mistake is there in the diagram. So, it is R 2 dash and this is your coal loss to be subtracted I mean here here all coal loss uh, whatever was there. So, that branch is removed, but for this part this R 2 dash 1 upon S here coal loss also has to be subtracted if you remove this a simplification right. So, this is another thing another thing is that the corresponding wherein the iron loss uh, resistance R i omitted and this loss would be subtracted from the gross mechanical output that is power absorbed by R 2 dash 1 upon S minus 1 this one right. Now, this amounts or to certain approximation which is quite acceptable in the normal range of sleep in an inaction machine this is an approximation. It may be noted that the power dissipated into R 2 dash into 1 upon S minus 1 includes the coal loss that is figure 8 b which must be subtracted from it to obtain the gross mechanical power. When you will do the numericals so few numericals I will show you. For getting net mechanical power output the windage and friction loss must be further subtracted from it. Windage and friction loss right frictional loss sometimes we call it a rotational loss that will be given few percent some percentage of this right. The coal loss windage and friction loss together are lumped as rotational loss as both these losses occur when the motor is running right. So, the rotational loss in an induction motor 
is substantially constant right at constant applied voltage and motor speed varies very little from no load to full load not much change in the no load to full load only thing is that for numerical solving net mechanical power is equal to shaft power this thing you have to keep it in your mind shaft power means net mechanical power right so another thing is the approximate circuit model approximate circuit model is shown like this that means all these things this branch put here only and others are club it together but this kind of analysis will give you erroneous result because like a transformer this i0 actually very small right but in induction motor it will be maybe 30 to 50 percent this i0 so this kind of calculation if you do for simpler simple uh, using the simple circuit result will not be accurate because this i0 will be very high for induction machine it will be 30 to 50 percent right so this approximation everything what i said it is written here right everything is written here so further the primary leakage reactance is also necessarily higher your what you call higher in an induction motor compared to a transformer and so ignoring the voltage drop in primary reactants is not quite justified right so induction most machine you have to uh, when you solve the numerical you have to consider your what you call that your uh, accurate uh, accurate model right so therefore the result obtained by this model are considerably less accurate right and this i told you magnetizing sun branch which draws current i0 at almost 90 degree lagging the power factor at which the motor operates at full load is low about 0 0.8 at light load that is small i to dash the machine power factor is much lower this is the inherent problem of the induction motor because of the presence of the air gap in the magnetic circuit right and the fact that the excitation current must be drawn from the mains that is the stator side right with this thank you very much we will be back again